In today's video, we're gonna make a major upgrade to our hen house. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. Having the chickens has been great, except for one daily chore, and that is opening their door at sunrise and closing it at sunset. Having this door on their coop gives them an extra measure of protection if something were to dig underneath their run. So we definitely want to have it, but it's just kind of a pain to do it manually every day. So we looked into some automatic chicken coop door openers. After doing some research on automatic chicken coop openers, I found they're pretty darn expensive. A decent one is gonna run you over $200 and I wasn't really a fan of that. So being an engineer, I kind of wanted to design my own and make it for myself, but I don't really have the time for that. So what I did was I called up my old college roommate who is now going for his PhD in engineering and has a lot of time on his hands being a student and asked him to do it. He was always better at the mechatronic side of things anyway when we were in undergrad, so I was happy to give him a small project. He's basically automated everything in his apartment using an Arduino anyway, so I figured this would be a breeze. You crazy birds. Well, the tropical storm hit today and our box got a little soggy, but this is a special delivery from Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I present to you the Chicken Guard by Spore Industries. His last name is Spore. He 3D printed this box and this little pulley and the idea is that it uses an ambient daylight sensor, which is this little guy right here, to know whether it's light or dark out, and it will adjust the pulley accordingly to open or close my door. So outside of the 3D printed box, it looks like he used a little rubber band here for kind of a waterproof gasket when I mount it out above the door. Here is an Arduino Nano. It's the smallest kind of Arduino you can buy. It takes solder connections only. Looks like he's potted it in hot glue to keep any corrosion off the board and make sure everything's functioning correctly. Underneath it, it's kind of hard to see, but this is the servo motor. So that's what's doing all the work. Then it looks like other than that, it's pretty simple. We have a button here, which I suppose is going to be to raise and lower. There's an LED here, which is a, I guess is gonna indicate status. The power connection, and this wire goes to a magnetic switch. This is gonna be the feedback for the door so that the Arduino knows what position the door is in. In the rest of the kit, he supplied a six volt power supply with the mating parts for the magnetic sensor and a couple more screws to install the thing. And then of course these instructions, which may or may not be laced with some profanity and probably one of the better return policies I've ever seen. So let's get this thing installed. The first step and probably the hardest step is going to be to run power from my shop out here to the chicken coop. I originally thought about doing a solar setup with a car battery, but that was just extra expense I didn't really want. Brendan was able to make this and ship it to me for $80, which is approximately a third of what I would have spent on a commercial unit. So I hope it works out. Here are the materials that I think I'm gonna be needing for the electric install. This is a leftover GFCI outlet from our bathroom remodel. I got a cover plate and box for it, a switch for the inside so we can turn the power in and off. This is some soft conduit that's rated for direct burial, which is good because some of this is gonna be underground. Then I have the coupler for the conduit and the entry gland into the box. And then finally, 12-2 Romex that I had left over from another job. Now I'm going to run the conduit so I can figure out the approximate length, then I'll cut it, run wire through it, and then I can fasten it all down. Fishing this wire through the conduit was a huge pain. I did not have the pulling lubricant that I needed, nor did I have the right tools.
I'm sure a couple electricians watching cringed, but got her done. Now let's flip the breaker and see if something blows up. Nothing's on fire yet. I'm gonna test for power with my battery charger. My saying lately is nothing is ever easy. And this project is no different. Didn't have power at the outlet. Traced it back with my multimeter and found that the old switch that I was reusing from our bathroom seems to have gone bad. If I'm measuring continuity between the switch, it should go from zero continuity to full continuity when the switch flips, and it doesn't. In comparison, here's another switch that I found. Notice how it goes from zero ohms to open lead. And with the switch that I had grabbed by accident, Nothing. Open. So, this is garbage. Time to install this one and try it again. Take two. Your birdie's got power. Okay, I finally have power. It took a lot longer than I expected. It's starting to get dark and these birds want to go to bed, so I got a book at getting the rest of this thing installed so they can get in for the night. I did run out of daylight last night so I had to let the girls back in the old fashioned way. But I got it all installed except for two steps. The last two remaining steps are to tie the string to the top of the door and plug it in. All right, here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna plug it in. <laughs> oh, I gotta put the switch on. <laughs> okay, real moment of truth. Now in the instructions, it says it reads the daylight sensor every 10 minutes. And if I wanna open it manually, I can just hit the yellow button. So let's see if that works. Absolutely nothing. Great. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I think it's something to do with this power supply. Whenever I plug it into the Arduino, the light goes from constant to flashing and it makes this clicking noise. Let's see if you can hear this. So, I'm just gonna call Brandon and see if he has any advice. All right, I ran an extension cord from inside to bypass this GFCI out here that may be bad. We're gonna see if this works. It's the same issue, this thing's splashing. So it's not my outlet. I just got off the phone with technical support, i.e. Brendan, who thinks that the problem is not in the power supply itself, but that the wires coming into the Arduino are somehow touching and shorted, so the power supply keeps resetting. So we gotta take it back off the wall, and we'll see if that's the issue. Okay, I brought it inside and I plugged the Arduino in directly, and it actually started working. You can tell because there's a red LED right on the Arduino, and then this servo rotates a little bit. And then I took it to the kitchen, and I tried this plug, and it seemed to work a little bit too. Oh. Now it's not working. I basically found the connection was very intermittent and it was unpredictable whether it would work or not. So at my suggestion, Brennan considered the fact that hot glue might actually be conductive enough that it's shorting between the power and ground pins. So I'm gonna try to separate where he's got this glued together. There's the power and ground pin, unfortunately, are right next to each other. So I'm gonna try to cut away in between that. Pretty sure I figured out the issue. And I think it comes down to the worst soldering job in the world made by Brendan. 
these there's three wires here that are supposed to connect to this ground pin that very tiny hole right there and they just popped off as soon as i cut this glue off i think that was the issue we weren't getting good connection to ground i'm going to try to resolder them and see if that helps Turns out all the soldering was kind of a waste of time. It didn't work anyway, so I just sent it back to Brendan. Fast forward two weeks and we are back in business. I sent the opener back to Spore Industries. Luckily they had that amazing return policy and the root cause of the issue was diagnosed to be a faulty circuit board. Not really sure why the circuit board pooped out, but it did. So I received the unit back. It's got a new board in it. I think it works. We're gonna get it installed like the old one was and See for sure. I have it all installed again. I'm gonna hit the button to see if I can manually operate it a couple times. Nice. Look at that. Just like a garage door. Chicken garage door. Cool. Love it. Okay, moment of truth, it's dark out. Let's see if it shut. Well, that is a shut chicken door if I ever saw one. So I think it works. We'll have to come out in the morning again to see if it's open. Are all the girls in? That's Gr the real check. Girls are all in safe. No stragglers left behind. It's about 9 a.m. the following morning. I'm gonna check and make sure the chickens are out and the door's open. That's a good sign. Look at that. She's open. Happy birds. You got some happy birds? Yeah, okay. That's a wrap for this project. It had its struggles as always, but at the end of the day, we have an opener that works as good as a commercial one for half the price. If you like this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe with notifications. You'll get an alert every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern when we drop a new video. Thanks for watching.